Dave with Airspool here, and a lot of you have asked for us to include solar panels in with our solar powered hybrid air conditioning kits. And so our intent is going to be to begin to do that. And so we have these, these are flexible solar panels. A lot of advantages and disadvantages to flexible solar panels. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So these are not your father's flexible solar panels. These are not PET. These have specialized coating to make them impervious to UV. There's a 10 year manufacturer and workmanship warranty on these from Flex Solar, the manufacturer. And then we're giving a five year buy and try guarantee. So you can get all of your money back, including shipping both ways if you're not absolutely delighted, okay? So the big advantage of these is that they're lightweight. They only weigh 9.9, .9. these particular ones weigh 9.9 .9 pounds. So super easy to get up on the roof. If you look at these other arrays here, these are these panels weigh from 45 to 60 pounds for glass covered panels, and they're hard to get on the roof. Takes a couple guys, or takes some type of lift, or takes a lot more workmanship because you're having to leg into the roof. You look underneath these panels a little bit. A, they're a pigeon coop which is always unsightly and unsettling, but also you need to have these L brackets that mount into that leg into the roof joist and from the, and then put the rails on. The rails cost money, the L brackets cost money, the Iron Ridge hardware costs money to get the solar panels attached to the, to the L brackets and to the roof rails and so, to the solar rails. And so, there's some hidden costs when people price out solar panels or not really think about that or maybe not thinking about what it costs to ship. If you're real near a place that has glass panels, for sure, that's a good option. We're, we don't really have a dog in the fight. We're doing this as an additional service for people. We're working to make these competitive. The disadvantage of flexible panels is, yeah, they're more expensive. They're two to three times the cost for these high-end flexible panels versus glass panels as of now. All right, but these also, they're pretty good at keeping, pretty impervious to dirt compared to older PET panels. So I think the PET panels, the older or any PET or other uh, RV panels, they're good in a pinch when you're out camping or whatever, but they're not meant for residential use or commercial use in this case, but these are designed with the 10 year warranty. And so we think it's time to embrace flexible solar panels. All right, so um, little trick here, we doubled these up. We give you 84, a set of 84 screws. We give you this silicone, which will show how to use that here in a second. And we give you the don't give you the drill, but we give you this um, this uh, Phillips head. And so pretty much give you what it, it needs to do this job. And the prevailing wind here is from the southwest. So we have these so they're doubled up such that the wind will come, come this direction in general. And there's less of a chance for wind getting underneath these. But that's one of the advantages, too, of flexible panels, the way that we have them installed. A lot of people will say, oh, you need to put these on rails, put them on something, give them some airflow between the roof and, and the panel. And probably not a bad idea, but we live dangerously here, and we want just to make this super easy. We've installed, you'll see a couple down there that we've had installed for going on two years now, haven't had any issues. And um, by having them right on the roof, there's no way that air can get underneath these. And so that's that makes it such that that's one last thing you need to worry about. Luckily, today is not a super windy day, but it gets super windy in Las Vegas, as it probably does in your area, a few, at least a few days a year here. It seems like there's, there's two seasons here, hot and windy. And today is more of a hot day than a windy day. But speaking of which, so this, if you look at this infrared thermometer here, Okay, that right now, the roof is showing at 139 degrees. And so these particular panels will go up to 185 degrees. And so that's one potential downside of these. If you're in Yuma or somewhere where potentially you're in your, <laughs> if you've got a black asphalt roof in Yuma, probably this is 
not going to be an ideal fit for you. But if you're in a little bit Las Vegas or a little bit cooler and you have at least white asphalt, reflective a little bit. Um, this roof, the, the hottest we ever measured this roof to is 178 degrees. So that's uh, that's getting up there, but still within the range. And um, But take that into consideration. Also, this roof, you have to have at least a 412 hitch to your roof. And if you these are not meant to be put on a flat roof, don't do that. Don't screw these into a flat roof because you're going to have issues. We're not guaranteeing, warranting, etc. that you're not going to have leaks for doing what we're doing. We can just say that we, I mean, you can say, well, you're in Las Vegas. Of course, you're not going to. But really, by having this 412 pitch, by putting silicone in there, we don't think you're going to have any issues. And um, but normally with a 412 pitch, we're, we have the benefit of this parapet here. Probably most of you at home don't have a parapet at the edge of your roof, so get some type of roof harness or do something so you're not uh, not uh, killing yourself. Beg, borrow, steal, get one from Amazon, etc., and that will make it a safer, safer work environment. So uh, with all that said, most of the work here is obviously done, but just... This is all you need to do. So we provide you with these screws. The screw here, it has a little, has a hard uh, silicone washer. And then we also give you this tube of GE silicone. And so you're going to take this and you're going to apply a little bit. If it weren't all hard, <laughs> you're going to knock out whatever's crusty in there to get, get the thing to flow again. There we go. So just, you know, put it on e each side. And uh, so this is a, we, I think in the future we're going to give you this. We're not giving it to you as of now. We're only giving you this. But this is a 5 16 driver, and that will make things a lot faster than using this. Phillips head here, but we're let's go with what we got. There, done. So, with Todd's help of doing the other 98% of the work, it's just that easy. So, yeah, do put all these screws in here so the wind can't get under. And um, right now, I'll see if you can see this. Pretty darn bright out here, but it's showing 980 watts right now. This is running all alternating current. The unit's right down here in our southeast corner of our building. And this is the outdoor unit for the unit right here. So you'll see the panels the, the, um, that we kind of had to do jumpers to have, uh, have uh, four and three. So this current setup comes with seven 205 watt panels to get you to 1435 watts. But the solar wires come back to the outdoor unit here. Just plug them straight in. The unit will run off of solar, which we're about to see. So yeah, we got we got 970 watts alternating current, zero PV right now. Why? Because we don't have these MC4 connectors plugged in. And by the way, these MC4 connectors, we made videos on these. These these are the weak suit of probably all of solar, in our opinion, and that they the, the metal pins they tend to gap a little bit or have issues. If they have an issue or gapping, you're not going to get any output. So. We, before we ship these units, we test running on solar, we test running on alternating current, we test on a combination of the two. We're not going to test each of these panels individually, because that's too much work to take them out of the box, et cetera, et cetera. But so far, so good. We haven't had issues with these panels. So um, 
And the other cool thing about these panels, they come with the, this MC4 connector. I can't tell you how easy, much easier your life is with this pinch to disconnect MC4 connector on the uh, female than normal ones. But okay, so we're connected now. So momentarily, theoretically. Three hours later, oh, we're also, sta sta by the way, the, sh the shading here, uh, these are half cut cells, so they're a little bit of shading, um, like you see this wire right here, that doesn't, that's not going to affect things too much, you see Todd's shadow right there, now these are coming on, so let's even purposely, we're going to stand in the shadow here. Uh, so this is still, so the, the array now, now the uh, solar is kicking in and it has 837 watts of solar, 42 watts of, of, uh, alternating current. Let's get out of the shadow for a second or get out of the sun, I should say. And so now it's. Yeah, it'll go. It'll go up anyway. There's enough here to accommodate any little shadows anyway. But the newer panels now with the half cut technology and the diode, it makes it such that you don't have an issue with with uh, Todd. Watch your pinky there. Um, it makes it makes it such that you um, won't have an issue with small shadows. And um, yeah, these are our uh, half cut cells technology. So. Keep an eye on that at shop.airspool.com. If you like talking about solar, if you talk, like talking about air conditioning, if you like talking about solar air conditioning, subscribe to our channel. We'll view any comments based on this video. Give us a thumbs up if you got anything out of this. Thanks for your time.